Hey team players, welcome back to Local Football Flavor. In today's episode, we're gonna be doing another player comparison. Two young and upcoming wide receivers that are being looked around the second turn, the third round, depending upon a 10 man or a 12, 12 man format. And before we dive into that, if you haven't already, and you're interested in joining the Local Football Flavor Best Ball Leagues here, send us an email. You can find our email on our YouTube page. We'd love to chat with you. The 20 buck one is the most popular one, and we're probably going to be doing a couple of them. So we look forward to talking to you about that. But Bob, in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down Chris Olave and Devonta Smith from the Eagles. So both of these guys, huge pedigree guys coming into the league. Smith, obviously, the first receiver in forever to win the Heisman. Olave has a huge rookie year down in New Orleans. And both of them look like point those arrows up because it looks like this could be a huge year for both of them. And to get these guys on the, the third round looks like, ooh, you got a chance of getting potentially a top five receiver this late. Obviously, they're fighting with a lot of talented guys before them. But both these two, Smith and Olave, bring so much to the table. And they're very similar guys. They like being downfield targets. They're very good with the ball in their hands. And both of them have the chance of giving you the three catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown line score, which is very good when we're talking about the fantasy world. Yeah, I mean, when I take a look at these two wide receivers, and, and it's really funny when I've been doing mock drafts in, the, in that turn of um, like that one, two, three turn, it always – one, two, three, four, more so. Okay. It always seems that you could get, you could come out of your draft with these five players. You can make a, you can make a, a draft of Justin Jefferson, um, Chris Olave, Devonta Smith. You can come out of the draft with those three as your top three guys, and that's what I've seen for receiver heavy guys. It's not a bad one. You could draft Christian McCaffrey, Devonta Smith, and Chris Olave. You can mm -hmm. have all three of them. And you could go with Bijan as well. Um, you know, you're, 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 and, and same with Jamar Chase. You could do Jamar Chase, Devonta Adam, or you could do Jamar Chase, Devonta Smith, and Chris Olave. Now, what I would want to look at with these two guys is whose situation has changed. Mm -hmm. And the situation that has changed drastically is, is Chris Olave's situation. Now, oh, yeah. Andy Dalton is in the twilight of his career at the end of his career and you would you looked at it and you said well what did chris Olave do last year you're like well did he produce these crazy numbers yeah he did mm -hmm. 72 receptions 1042 yards four touchdowns an average of 14.5 you saw what Devonte adams did in oakland with Derek carr Derek carr even had a subpar season last year and you say, hey, Bob, what, what, what did Devontae Adams do last year in a subpar system with a running back who could run the ball and was just toting the rock the whole time? Well, he got 1,516 yards and 14 touchdowns with an average of 15.2. Well, that sounds very familiar to me. Mm -hmm. And I will say that the Saints pretty much, if you kind of just walk it back a little bit and say, well, this offense looks very similar to the Raiders' offense last year with better offensive line, I would say. A much better offensive line. So position-wise, skill position-wise, you know, I'm not even considering Waller because he barely touched the field last year, but with Jawan Johnson and Casey Hill, you've got Kamara, Kendrick Miller, and Williams, Jamal Williams, mm -hmm. and you have um, Alave. You essentially have Michael Thomas and Rashid Shahid. Now, you look at it and you say, well, this is all pointing in Chris Alave's favor. It, mm -hmm. This could be Chris Alave going for 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns, 12 touchdowns, and you're getting him second or third round. This is the question you have to ask yourself. If you're drafting at the bottom or you're drafting in the middle, do you grab Olave? Over a St. Brown or a Williams. 
ahead or Wilson. of those other guys, ahead of Ramondre Stevenson, ahead of other players. Do you go out there and get Chris Olave? And I think you do. I think mm-hmm. you have to. Olave projects to be able to finish as the top five wide receiver. Mm-hmm. The top five wide receivers that I see in my mind from at or at least the top five from this grouping of round one through three guys, you definitely I'm including Justin Jefferson. I'm probably including Jamar Chase, C D Lamb, Chris Olave. He's in the top five. I mean, when you look at what the Saints can do and what we want the Saints to do going into this to the season, the deep ball needs to be there. Chris Olave can catch anything that comes his way, it feels like. Projecting 72 receptions with Derek Carr is reasonable. Mm-hmm. That is a very reasonable target to hit. And Derek Carr will throw the ball a little bit farther, so maybe a, a couple more yards coming his way. And we know that Derek Carr can move the ball, so definitely a couple more touchdowns coming his way. The only question you might have about Olave is, what kind of role is Michael Thomas going to play in the system? What kind of role is Rashid Shaheed going to play in the system? But we know and we've seen talented wide receivers with talent around them still producing, one of which is DK Metcalf. Mm -hmm. DK Metcalf has produced even with Tyler Lockett on the field. We've seen Justin Jefferson produce when, you know, we we had Adam Thielen, old man Thielen coming off the field, and even with TJ Hawkinson. We have seen um, Cooper Cup do everything because there's nobody else on his team. Um, But... Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. These are the guys. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are a good kind of comparison here. Is Tyreek Hill is going in the first round, tends to be between the four and the seven range. And you have Waddle going in the second round, tend to be in the back half of the second round. And if Tua can 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 help you keep two wide receivers there in Hill and Waddle, I'm almost 100% certain that Carr could support Michael Thomas and Chris Olave, mm-hmm. and more so Chris Olave. And I'm getting Chris Olave, and he's basically the number one guy there in the second round. And this is this is what I'm seeing. The late second and round, I, too. And this is why I bring this up, is that Chris Olave feels like the undisputed number one there. Devonta Smith is the number two. Mm-hmm. T. Higgins is the number two. Jalen Waddle is the number two all being drafted in the same range. Mm-hmm. Now, I would really question myself, oh, Alave or Amon Ra, oh, that's a tough decision, but I'm not questioning myself when it comes to those four other players. Alave is the one I think out of those four of Alave, Waddle, Higgins, and Smith that is going to have the opportunity to finish higher than his ADP, higher than a lot of people think. Um, and the situation's ripe to do it. Whereas for Devonta Smith, Devonta Smith's production, he had almost similar similar receptions, similar yardage as Alave. Mm-hmm. He had three more touchdowns. And so we can't be 100% certain. You cannot ever really be 100% certain that the touchdowns are going to be there. That's why, that's, true. that's why I'm really cautioning um, against shifts in your mind about touchdowns. And outside of Devontae Adams because, eh, I don't know, that situation is a little weird. But with Devonta Smith, seven touchdowns seems to be the ceiling. You know, maybe he'll get to nine, but if A.J. Brown is there, I think that that we saw the best of what the Eagles were going to do. We saw that last year. So mm. that, for me, is the ceiling. I don't think they can get any better than they played last year offensively. Minus maybe the one game with Gardner Minshew, so that's why I'm, I'm adding in one more touchdown for Devonta Smith. But Alave has greater potential, mm-hmm. I think, to go up in this upswing. Um, so that's why I would take Alave over Smith. But again, just like we said with Taylor and Chubb, there's a good chance that you can get both of these players when you're drafting. And I think it's very well said there, Bob. So when I look at the thing with Smith that makes him different, there's a radical change in Philadelphia that people are not recognizing. They lost an all-pro left tackle 
for a seventh rounder. And, and that is a massive change in their team building philosophy. Obviously, they chose to do so. They think they have a diamond in the rough there. Well, they still have Blaine Johnson, though. Yeah, he's the right tackle. I know. But they still um, have him. Well, you need two tackles in this league. So <laughs> my point is, is that Smith is the downfield receiver. And when we look at getting the ball downfield, you need more time to do it. It's just a fact of life. So when you lose your left tackle, it tends to be a pretty strong indicator that that could be a challenge. I'm bringing these two up in the same episode because both of them seem to be skyrocketing at the same time. And I'm trying to essentially say that I don't think that Smith should be. I think that you're right, Bob. He had the absolute best performance that Philadelphia could have last year. Granted, he had an amazing year. He had an absolutely great year. But if we're looking at does this team change if the number one dog goes down? So to use your comparison of the other three in that same group, if, if Chase goes down, does Cincinnati's offense change dramatically? No. Higgins has stepped right into that spot before and been fine. Waddle has done the same thing as Hill. I make an argument Waddle's a better overall receiver than Hill. When we look at if... Brown would go down, would Philadelphia's offense change? The answer is yes, dramatically. They don't use Smith in the same capacity as their number one. It's almost in the same way as San Francisco and IU with Devo. So I all this to say is that the Philadelphia offense did max itself out, and it did amazingly well. However, we have to have the, the fear of saying, what if we never get there again? Mm -hmm. And what if that was the best of the best? And that's why overall, Bob, I, I completely agree with you. Everything you said about Alave. I think that the upside of having a real and competent quarterback under center, the fact that the New Orleans running game is so in flux, they're going to have to rely more upon their pass. And the Eagles have the opposite. The Eagles literally could turn the ball and run it every single play, like it's 1922, and probably win the NFC. And that's a fact. <laughs> They're definitely, I mean, when we broke down these teams and like looking, projecting forward, they're the team to beat in the NFC and until sure. an, another person comes along. Um, you know, I, I personally, I like Dallas, but, you know, we can't go against Kansas City or go against Philly until we see differently. Mm -hmm. And to the question of where do I take these guys, um, you know, I would say if you want Olave and you are sitting down there in a in a ten team league, there's a good chance Olave may come back to you in the third round. He Maybe. might come back to you. In a twelve team league, he's uh -huh. not coming back to you. So if you're drafting seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and you want Olave and you're you're debating, oh, you know, Alave or Devonte Adams, or you're debating Alave or Amon Ross St. Brown. You've got a tough decision to make because, you know, the ta all three are talented, and so you you mm -hmm. just got to ask, well, what situation do you like better? What are you going to be able to deal with given a week to week basis there? Um, and out of outside of Amon Ra, I think out of all the wide receivers being taken in the second round, that Alave has the most upside out of every single one. Because the situation, because he's the number one, because he has a quarterback that can throw him the ball, and we saw what he did with when a quarterback couldn't really throw him the ball, and he still produced. And so, you know, going and the, the draft, thing with the Saints, and when we look at the defense they're going to be playing, they don't play a good pass rush basically the entire year because the NFC South plays the NFC North. Maybe the best pass rusher of all seven of those teams are fighting against. Is Hutchinson? Maybe. Hutchinson. Um, Minnesota doesn't have any. Green Bay doesn't have any. No one, no one in their division does. And then their crossover schedule to the AFC is the AFC South. So you're looking at maybe a rookie in Houston. Maybe the Colts pass rush gets there. The long story short is if Derek Carr needs time, he's going to have time the entire season. And Alave will be able to pull things off in a way that – I really think that when we get yeah, closer to August, he's going to be a 15 ADP type guy. And I he will should say, be. 
and I will say this, and 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 Olave and um, Devonta Smith are the reason why I would pass on Justin Jefferson mm-hmm. and Jamar Chase in the first round and take Christian McCaffrey or Austin Eckler or B. John Robinson because there is a really good chance coming back around. Because here's the thing. If I draft A.J. Brown, I probably am not drafting Devonta Smith. If I'm drafting Tyree Kill, I'm probably not drafting Waddle. And if I'm drafting Jamar Chase, I'm probably not drafting T. Higgins. So if you take a look at that first round, where A.J. Brown's going on the back half of the first, top of that second round there. Mm -hmm. If I am targeting Devonta Smith, say, in the third or fourth round, I'm probably maybe avoiding A.J. Brown because, you know, we have seen fantasy players go after two players from the same team, two skill position players, two wide receivers. And last year, it worked. For for Brown and for Devonta Smith, it worked. Mm -hmm. For Hill and Waddle, it worked. Um, For Higgins and for Chase, yeah, it worked. But there is a big danger to doing that. And And it's kind of like, you know, playing playing the, the scratch off lottery, right? Mm-hmm. Is that I know that if I buy a dollar ticket, that every six or seven tickets will be a winner, but it will probably just pay a dollar. Mm-hmm. If I have a thirty dollar ticket, there's gonna my base level that I'm gonna win is gonna be thirty, and I'm gonna have to buy three 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 of them to potentially win thirty or more. Um, if I buy a fifty dollar one, I have more invested in it, but it wins higher amounts, and it wins a little bit more often. Not more often, but the odds of you winning every two point seven versus every eight is different. And you know you're at least walking out with fifty. Yeah, you're investing a lot and in putting in it, but you're at least walking out with fifty. You've really got to think to yourself and say, "Well, what am I comfortable doing? If I'm comfortable going all in." For the 50, I could be getting paid out 5 million, right? With Tyree Kill, Ch- Chase, and those combinations. But maybe if I stick with the 30, I've got a really good chance to get a high production layout, but I'm still going to get paid back 30 on it. And that's my reasoning for going something like Christian McCaffrey, Chris Olave, Devonta Smith, because I've spread the wealth between three different teams. And there's if one of them fails, the two others still have a chance. But if I've put all my money into the one spot, yeah, I could have a really big payday. But if they don't do well that week, then I'm submarine. I'm losing. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think there's, and I think that if you go by Jamar Chase early, you question a little bit. Hmm, should I take a running back in the third round? And then you might pass on Devonta Smith, or you might pass on Chris, Chris Olave. And I think I would rather pass on Jamar than pass on Olave and Devonta Smith. I agree with that. I completely agree with that because, A, it means you're getting an elite running back. And, and that's always the, the foundation of your team. And, you know, we look at the, at the capability of these second-tier guys at receiver – and Olavi, like I said, I think is the centerpiece for them as, as far as moving forward. So in tomorrow's episode, we're going to address two running backs that maybe had their best and they're done. And that's what tomorrow's episode will be. But Bob, I want to give you a chance. If there's anything left with Smith or Olave that you want to cover before we break out here? Yeah, I, I think, like I said about both of them, I think both of them are going to be, I think Olave is going to be top five. I think Devonta Smith is still going to be top 15 when it comes to the end of the season. So you can't go wrong with either of them. But, you know, I would rather rock both of them. And that's totally fair. That's how you build winners. Sorry, team players. We appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, click like and subscribe, and we'll be with you tomorrow.